Hi, this is Justice. In this video, I'm going to be interviewing Dan Snipes. Dan Snipes has a printing shop and he can print artwork to canvas, which is something that I've been trying to figure out how to do. What does the actual process look like? What are the results look like? And, and what should I be doing and paying attention to? In this video, I'm going to be going over a lot of those details and we're going to be getting into some of the nitty gritty aspects of it. So it's a little bit of a longer video, but if you're looking at printing your artwork, on Canvas, then this is going to give you almost everything you need to know how to do and what settings and who to contact and what process to use. So enjoy the video and if you have questions, put it in the comment section. This is Dan Snipes and Dan is helping us today with printing a G clay, which, uh, what does G clay mean? In French, it's, it's uh, just means spraying of ink. So okay. it's pretty much just a, a high-end ink chip printer but uh, you know uh, like we're working on an Epson uh, 48 or 9800 here which prints uh, 44 inches wide and it'll print up to uh, 2800 dpi so it, yeah it, it, which is insanely detailed yeah and and for 95% of the printing that we do, uh, I keep it at 1440 DPI. And uh, on watercolor paper, canvas, um, until you go to a, a real high glossy photo finish, are you right. going to see the difference at uh, 2880 yeah. versus so 1440? The uh, 2880 uses more ink, you lose the detail, yep. and so it ends up being a uh, a waste of time and extra effort for exactly. no gain. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan and I went through some of this stuff uh, about a week ago and looking at printing a piece from Rebel 5 Pro, which is using the nanopixel technology, which creates some of those lovely textures that we see in natural media and traditional artwork. So what we're going to be doing today is talking about some of the different things that artists need to know, especially artists like me who've done specifically just digital art for my entire life. So this is a brand new territory, and so Dan's been kind enough to kind of walk us through what you need to remember when you start working on a piece in order to have it printed to canvas. I remember a week ago when I uh, first got together with Justice and we were going over some of these ideas, I mentioned color space is uh, so important. And it's... Um, it's something that you've got to carry all the way through. If you're a photographer, then in your camera, you try to set your camera to uh, either RGB 1998, sRGB, mm -hmm. there's several different color modes, and then you carry that all the way through from your uh, photography capture into the computer, the um, screen can be balanced for that same color space right. and then as you output to print mm -hmm. to the same color space. So that's, that's important you keep that all the way along otherwise you'll see subtle um, shifts in contrast, color, right. um, etc. And that's one of the things that Rebel 5 Pro has in it that does not have it in the standard version is your ability to set your color space. So I set the color space inside of Rebel 5 Pro to, I believe it's sRGB, and then we're doing RGB over here, which is very close. From yes. What I understand. Yeah. Uh, I've, all my color space is set up to RGB 1998. That's because I shoot in my camera at that, mm -hmm. import into the computer at that, and print out to the printer at that. And Dan does some beautiful panoramic photography, which I'll have um, showing on the screen right now. So my computer, I have a, a Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, and the studio has an option in the display settings for vivid color profile. And talking with Dan, I realized that I need to change that so that I'm seeing on the screen the same colors and I can adjust it correctly over here so that when it comes over here, we're not playing with a whole bunch of different settings trying to make it look right. So set your screen to RGB or sRGB instead of the overly saturated vivid setting. Yeah. The, the vivid looks great, 
looks but, great. But it's like, you know, taking all your iPhone pictures and putting them in and bumping the saturation up so it right. looks, you know, beyond natural. Yeah, a little cartoony. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, papers and canvas. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. Um, uh, there's all sorts of um, high-end art papers. Um, you know, I think it's uh, Hammermule makes some, Epson makes some, um, Red River makes some. There's, there's a, you know, you can go on the internet and um, have an endless choice of those. Yeah. So you've been printing actually my neighbor Wayne's artwork for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you have a specific type of paper that you use because it's worked the best over years and, and his artwork comes out beautifully on it. And so what is it that you use for printing a traditional piece like his? Well, um, if, if it's on paper, maybe uh, Somerset Velvet, okay. uh, which is kind of a standard of the industry. Got it. And then uh, on canvas, um, I use a... Uh, company out of Florida called LexJet that makes a uh, Sunset okay. um, is is the name of their product and um, and then um, I always spray it afterwards with a protective coating okay. so you can get that coating in a gloss or a uh, you know like a semi gloss and so I'll use one of those uh, high volume, low pressure um, guns okay. and hang the work and spray it. And, and then it's like bulletproof. You can wipe it down, you know, right. wet. And, and, yeah, yeah, that's good. And, and it, it uh, just helps, helps protect it. So you were telling me that when you are doing something like this, if you get it right once, write it down and remember what the settings are so that you're not going back and going, okay, let's print it again. And if you're working with a different printer and they're using a different paper or a different setting, you may have results that look completely different than what you were yeah. hoping for. Yeah. If you know what you like, keep doing the same thing and make small adjustments so that you're not surprised by and, the outcome. And like I showed you on a couple of uh, test prints, um, mm -hmm. I noted you know, one done without levels, one done uh, right. levels adjustment, and so same thing, I'll go through and do smaller versions so yes. you're not, you know, blowing through a bunch of paper, and, and mm -hmm. they can be, you know, just little strips, but you can note your color adjustments, your, you know, contrast levels, um, all right. of that, and then you've got a reference point uh, to go back to. Yeah, so you had mentioned something that I really uh, thought was smart, and I'm, I'm assuming that most printers would already have this process. So if you're if you're printing something and you're trying to make sure it looks right, you don't have to print the whole thing. Dan was suggesting that you print a, a critical part of your painting, like the eyes, just a, a, a strip to see if it looks right without using a whole big piece of canvas or a lot of ink, mm -hmm. which is a great suggestion. And you want, probably want to do that every single time in the beginning to make sure that it prints the way you want. Yes. Like with uh, some it, sort of test on canvas. Yeah, that definitely in the beginning. But I, I um, print for uh, several different artists and uh, once I've done a master print and got their approval on it, then as long as I keep this the same routine from beginning to end. I'm mm -hmm. using, you know, the same paper, um, the, the printing from the same menu, not changing anything. Right. Um, to a uh, Epson printer, which is a, you know, a proofing printer. It's, it's mm -hmm. supposed to be spot on, and using their pro 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 that's easy for you to say. Yeah. Pro proprietary inks, yeah. um, rather than uh, some, you know, uh, uh, like a cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I, I've tried that once, and your color balance goes way off. Yeah. So, so the, it's important to stay with um, uh, 
you know, tried and true mm -hmm. uh, product that you know is going to be color correct. Yeah, now, uh, when you're using a traditional inkjet printer, and I think this is true, so you have to check me on this, versus the actual G-Clay ink, the G-Clay ink is thicker and more pigment-based pigment versus, uh, I think it's water-based for uh, a regular ink. So it's thinner, the G-Clay is thicker, it gives more of a textured appearance, which looks more like traditional paint for a lot of different reasons. And I think that actually is the reason why G-Clay is, is preferred versus printing from a standard printer using standard printer ink. That sounds right. I'll believe you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just say it with a little more confidence that we've got it. Uh, look online. Make sure you do some research, but this should get you a, a good a good footing to move forwards from. So we're going to go ahead and move to the screen here, and Dan's going to show a little bit of what he did with the levels. And then we're going to try a print. Okay, so Dan was saying that when you're exporting from... Uh, any program, really, whatever you're going to use, that it's important to choose the right format. And so you have a specific format that you prefer. Well, I I, uh, I want to work in a format that is um, doesn't have compression. Like a JPEG will compress its file and steal pixels, you know, from next to it uh, when it opens back up. So you want a uh, lossless. Um, which would be TIFF. Um, I work a lot in Photoshop, and so I save my files in Photoshop. Um, okay. So there's there's no compression. But out of um, your software, TIFF is probably the best choice. Got it. So we brought this over, and we originally had some issues with the color, and so you made some adjustments here. And so can you go through some of that with us? Well, as as we open this and look at it on the screen, it, it looks gorgeous. But if you open up your levels channel or create a levels layer mm. uh, to work in, then you notice that down at this end of the uh, levels scale, the histogram, um, there's, there's no information. There's nothing there, it's totally flat. So you want to take your your lower um, scale and drag it up right to where th you start to see information, and that is that's what you're going to get printed now is this area. If you have it way down there, you're going to get a lot of muted, um, muddy tones. Got it. So you always want to open your levels, um, bring them up, and then on this particular print, we did a test print at um, uh, 100 for the mid-range mm -hmm. and then decided to open it up by uh, 10 points. So that's that's where it is. Yeah, and that gave us those correct flesh tones. And then, um, you know, same holds true for the highlights. There's the highlights. Yeah, so while holding the Alt key down, what it's doing is it's showing the other side of the spectrum that's, that's not present or that's so within. There's, yeah, there's, you can see. There's the shadow end. Yeah, it's showing to the right of the histogram or the outside of the histogram versus the inside. But, but you see on the histogram all this lower area, there's just hardly any detail except for a little bit of that necklace coming over her shoulder. Yeah. So you should pull that all the way up to where you, you maybe just start getting. Yeah. And that's, that's going to... Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's going to that. give you your best um, output for printing. Got it. That helps a lot. And because the monitors that we're looking at are backlit, we, it's, it's a light-based as opposed to a pigment-based image, it's important that we adjust keeping that in mind because this is going to look a lot brighter with the screen than it will on a piece of paper that has no light behind it. Mm -hmm. So once we do the level adjustment, um, a lot of times uh, before I print, I'll just come up to layers, um, flatten the image to 
reduce file size. Um, sometimes, you know, if I'm printing a eight foot long piece, your file size could, you know, be hundreds of megs. And mm -hmm. so if you have several layers, it's sure nice to reduce yeah. that. And there's no um, point in keeping those once you're printing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so at this point, uh, I would say we're about uh, ready to throw it over to the printer. All right. Now I'm pretty excited because this is the first print that I've done of uh, my artwork on a canvas uh, ever. So this is a pretty big deal for me. So I'm excited to see what it looks like. Now we're choosing a file size. Now this printer does 44 inches uh, across and uh, nearly infinite length. Is there yeah. <laughs> a length limit? I'm assuming probably irrelevant length, length limit. Um, well, it, I've printed uh, 10 or 12 you know, feet, so... Um, That's going to be more than enough. Yeah, I don't think we're going <laughs> to go that size on you. Um, uh, and when you're printing, you want to make sure that you keep the resolution, not the resolution, the DPI at 200 or above, and 300 is what you were suggesting. Um, Start with the 300 DPI. Yeah, sta image. standard of the industry is 300 DPI, um, where uh, you're not going to see any, you know, pixelation or, or uh, yeah, still degradation look clean. to the image. Um, and and I understand that's one of the um, bonuses in the software you're working in is its ability to interpolate up that image and keep the sharpness, correct? Yeah, so we started with a five by six inch image and I bumped the resolution up in, uh, in Rebel to six by seven. And then we exported at 400% using NanoPixel export uh, for a 24 by 28 inch uh, size and then uh, over here, I think we were talking about doing a 30 by 36 or 31 by 36 inch. Do you remember what size we could talk uh, about? Right now, I've got it set up as 24, 28, but we could go larger on that. So now um, we're going to send this over to the printer. And so you hit Command P or from your pull-down menu, go to print. Um, and then this is where you want to go through and, you know, it shows I'm on my 9800 printer rather than on my, uh, you know, desktop uh, eight and a half by 11 printer. And then you want to go through printer settings and it'll bring up another menu and I'm on the 9800. My presets, uh, I was printing on art paper, but um, now I'm on canvas on 9800. So you want that to be set. We're gonna go with one, one copy. Uh, paper size, I, you have a lot of choices here. I end up making a lot of custom sizes for whatever um, I'm printing out. Um, and then under layout, you have a lot of choices on working through. What I mainly go through is printer settings, bringing that up, and I'm on roll paper. And this may be confusing, but I'm on watercolor paper radiant white. And for the profile of the, the canvas that I'm working in, which is uh, Lex, LexJet Sunset Select Matte Canvas, the profile, the, the media type that they suggest you use on this menu is watercolor paper radiant white. That gives the, the, the truest um, color output for that LexJet Sunset canvas. So it's uh, like pairing wine and cheese. Exactly.
Okay, and everything else, uh, output resolution, you have a choice of 1440. And when you're printing on canvas, it doesn't even give you a choice to go up to 2880 DPI. So mm -hmm. unless I changed my um, presets and what I was working on, um, it's not going to go up to 2800. Got it. So that's set. Um, you, I print in high speed. Some people prefer to, you know, print in low speed. I don't see much, that much difference bet between it. Okay, and then we're printing a, a border. We actually we're not printing a border. We're printing with a space around the image so that it can uh, be gallery wrapped. And and that is going to fall under my paper size. I'm just sure on my 36 inch roll to leave enough space for this um, 24 by 30 inch image. Yeah, we, we increased the size of the image in Photoshop uh, by about an inch and a half, I think, to make it a little bit more of a uniform size. Yeah. So out of that menu, I hit save and it will show me back on this menu the area that we're going to be printing. So, um, and then in here, I just want to double check color handling. Um, you want it to be Photoshop manages colors, not printer man manages colors. Because I'm printing out of the software Photoshop, sending it to the printer. If you tell printer to manage colors, then you're you're screwing up your your workspace and color space all the way along. So you want that to be Photoshop manages colors. Printer profile shows the LexJet Sunset um, canvas, and at that point, everything should be good to go. And you hit print does a little bit of scrolling and if you want you can open up your printer menu and it shows that it's sending girl in the shadow brown hair over to the printer and it should start rolling off the printer in any second. Got it. And for those of you who have looked at uh, printing on photo paper versus canvas cost-wise. I think you said that it's pretty similar. It's, it's pretty similar. Canvas is um, uh, maybe a little bit more, but it, it all, all depends on the, um, the, the, there's so many different art papers and the cost of them can be more than canvas in, in right. some yeah. cer circumstances. So, but, um, you know, uh, this company I've worked with in um, Florida for 10 years, LexJet, has an uh, incredible list of uh, supplies to buy from their, their own brand as well as a lot of other company brands. This is really a cool experience. Like I said, this is the first time that I've ever had this done. And looking at my art printed out, I, it's worth doing. Yeah, he because he was pretty excited when that big piece came rolling off the printer. It was like, wow, I created that. Yeah, it is. It's a really, it's a really special feeling. Um, I get emotional a lot, so it's not like it's too shocking for anyone who knows me. But uh, this is absolutely worth doing. So if you guys get a chance, find something that you like. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get it printed out. Uh, you'll you'll enjoy the process and it'll be worth doing and and it's just like everything else you're gonna learn a little bit every time you do it and thank you so much everybody. you're welcome it uh, was uh, uh, kind of a fun um, uh, to work on a new software like that and, and see the benefits of it on resizing how it came out it was uh, it's pretty cool yeah that the, the uh, final product the color is just yeah so much better on the canvas it's just looks beautiful yeah yeah it's a real it's a winner